Oh, Pizza Club's here. What's up? Thanks for coming. Who else is here? Who else is here? If someone showed me last time how to see who's in the chat and I already forgot. Whoops. What's up, Gary? Thanks for coming. My lighting situation is a little better this time. Um, a little tight in here, but you know, I think we'll manage. I'm just gonna give it a couple more minutes before we get started here. Four people so far. Yeah, I think we'll start uh, at five minutes in. Okay, I can figure out who, how to see who's in the chat, but, um, you know, Gary's here, I know Michael Fox from Pizza Club is here, uh, if anyone else I know is in the chat, just give a shout, I'm about to start here. Okay, cool. So, welcome to another pizza demo on the next little pizza Twitch channel. Um, we did a tavern style demo last time. That was a lot of fun. And I figured this time we do a bar pizza because it's kind of within the same conversation. It's like a related style, but you know, how do you really define that style? It's like this whole thing, right? And like recently there was this article that came out by uh, Kenji Lopez in the New York Times on tavern style, specifically the Chicago version of that pizza right so I think that kind of got people a little more aware of that style and what it's like 
and sometimes I think people conflate it with I don't even know if you can call it conflating but like um, it does remind people of kind of the similar style that's made in a pan right you see it a lot in the, the east coast um, in places like the south shore in, the, in New England um, in New Jersey they have it as well um, parts of Long Island there's a place called Rico's um, and they all like there's a common there's a common theme to them right it's like a thin crust pizza um, sometimes uses as cheddar although like tavern style doesn't use cheddar it's like it's kind of a you know it when you see it kind of a thing right so I thought it'd be fun to do the pan version of this um, and you know I, I was hoping to kind of open a conversation and I could kind of learn from people who are participating right and if they can give their input and if they've been to places that serve whatever you want to call this style right um i mean if i had to define it i would say it's a thin pizza right it's like traditionally baked in deck oven like a blotchet right it was like that's a very common oven you'd see uh in new england <clears throat> at about like mid 500s to close to 600 degrees anywhere from like seven to ten minutes um and a lot of these places they'll start it in the pan and then they'll finish it on the deck to get it like nice and crispy right um, some places use a sheeter, um, other places use a rolling pin. You see some variants in like, you'll have like what they call like a frico crust on the outside of it. And, you know, like I, I did research recently on the, another style called New England Greek style pizza, which my family did for, for almost 20 years. And, you know, some people say like, that's a precursor to this kind of pizza because there's a lot of similarities and they're pretty different, but yeah it's it's fun just like diving into this and kind of getting a lot a lot of history of it and yeah i got some notes here what what, what, I, want, what I want to talk about um so like for my version of this i like using a dryer dough um at about 53 to 57% hydration. Um, a thinner crust, so not like, you, you can make it kind of the way to do it, the South, South Shore style, which is like a little thicker. I prefer it thinner, um, anywhere from like 53 to 57%. Um, the last couple of years, I've been moving away from using oil in some of my doughs. Um, I know it's very popular in tavern style and in this style, but I actually find that oil softens the crust, right? At least the interior part of it, right? So I find that you can oil the, let's say your container, right? That you keep your dough in to prevent it from sticking, um, oil the pan, but I don't find it necessary to actually oil your dough or actually rather add oil to your dough. I like using a cheddar blend for this. Um, so this, if you were part of the last stream, right? This is a common blend I like to use for a lot of my pizzas, right? I like to use a two to one ratio of white cheddar and mozzarella, more, more of like a low moisture mozzarella, right? So that blend I like using for my Detroit style, my New England Greek style, for the bar pizza, for my tavern style. Um, it might not be like authentic, but I find that just having that blend handy is good for if I want to make any like kind of pizza and then from there you can kind of like, expand and like add to it um like let's say if you want to do like a St. Louis style right like I, I don't really aim for authenticity it's more capturing the spirit of a style right um I also find like cheddar is like a pizza quality cheddar is easier to get your hands on than like let's say compared to like a mozzarella right like in pizzerias, you see um, like Grande or Galbani, and Grande, you don't really see like a consumer version of it. Galbani, you do. Um, the low moisture version of it, not so much. So, but whereas, you know, for white cheddar, you can eat like Cabot, Cracker Barrel, like there's some great brands that are easy to, like, to get your hands on, on the consumer level. Um, what else? I use a rolling pin, so. I want to use one of these big guys. I think this is a 12 inch maybe. 
I like using a dough docker. Looks like a torture device, but it's not. <laughs> um, what else? Flour. I mentioned this. I like using an all-purpose. Um, something like King Arthur. I wouldn't. So if you watched the last stream for tavern style, right? I recommended Hecker's all-purpose. That is a very good flour for like Chicago style pizzas, right? It's like even though it's categorized as all-purpose, it's on the higher end. So it's like higher end of protein. So it's like somewhere between a all-purpose and a bread flour. Um, and I think it's a winter wheat rather than a harvest spring. Great flavor. Um, but I don't prefer for this style, mainly because I like my tavern style a little thicker and my bar pie a little thinner, if that makes sense. And I'll post this, I'll post this later, but like just a quick general formula for this. So this would make four seven ounce dough balls, which is about like 200 grams. You want 500 grams of flour. 285 grams of water, so that's about 57%. I'm gonna come back to this in a second. Um, a half gram of instant dry yeast, so that's 0.1%. And then 10 grams of salt, so that's 2% salt. Um, if you're using things like oil in your dough, I like using a neutral oil if I do um, use an oil, so something like canola, soybean oil. Um, I will lower the amount of water I use, so anywhere from like 53 onward if I'm going to use oil in my dough. Um, so in general, I want a, like a, a drier dough for this um, just because I want it to bake quickly um, in relation to like the toppings on top. Um, sauce. So again, like similar to the cheese blend, I like using, um, I have a go-to blend, right? So for my sauce, I do a three to one ratio of crushed tomatoes to tomato paste. You don't want like a really runny, watery sauce in this. Um, this We're not making Neapolitan pizza here. We're, we want something that's gonna not affect the bake too badly. And um, the paste gives like a nice, like robust flavor, I find. Uh, a little salt, oregano, olive oil, and run that through an immersion blender. So that, that sauce you can use, it's great for Detroit style, um, the tavern pizza, if you were part of that last time. And yeah, it's, it's great. Ryan digs the paste. What do you use? Do you, I, so Ryan Sanctuary Pizza is by um, Santa Sauce Tomatoes. And I, I love their, their 7-Eleven crushed tomatoes and their Super Dolce. That's what I use for my for my Detroit style. It's People are always blown away by, by that. Yeah, 7-Eleven. Talk about the cheese blend. Um, a note about the mozzarella, right? So I said two to one. If you use a whole milk mo mozzarella, you might not have to use as much cheese when you're uh, covering your pizza. Um, you don't want it to get really oily, right? Because then it's going to get like floppy and not break bake properly. Um, I like like a nice like crisp crust. So just keep that in mind. You can use like for a 12 inch pizza, you can use something like 120, 180 to 200 grams for 12 inch pizza. And then for a 10 inch, something from like 100 to 120 grams. Uh, let's talk equipment very quickly. This is a little hot because the oven is on. So we're going to use a round pan like this guy over here. This is from Lloyd Pans. They make great pans for Detroit, bar pizzas. Um, Lots of other great products. Uh, yeah, that's Lloyd Pans. Uh, that's a 12 inch. I got a 10 inch as well. Um, I don't know if you guys this real quick. I can do this up making so much noise. I forget which pizzeria that does bar pizza does this, but they have these pans where it's like, it's cut this way, right? So. Essentially, you would start your bake on this this pan, right? And then, like halfway through, you would just kind of like shovel off and finish on the deck, right? Which is pretty cool. I haven't really like played this too much. Uh, I would say the downside to it is you can't really get like a, a frico on this part of it. It's more like it's gonna get kind of stuck here, but you know, the Spangler pan 
Okay, I'll have to look into that. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> okay, what else, what else? Um, because it's a drier dough, I also recommend you use a mixer. Um, you can work it by hand if you want to. Uh, I've mixed very dry dough by hand. It's, you know, if you have a mixer, I would use it. Um, you'll want a spatula to get it, you know, out of the pan easily. Um, sometimes a paring knife helps to have handy. Um, in addition to docking, right, you might want to like do some extra docking with the paring knife on the on the on the dough so it doesn't bubble up in the in the bake while it's in the oven. Uh, a metal peel is handy so that once you get your pie onto the deck, it'll be easy to kind of take it out. Pizza stone, pizza steel, you know, just standard equipment for home pizza making. And I had some resources here for like recipes and like other people who have resources out there for, for baking pizza or the style of pizza, but we can get that get to that in the end. Um, you know, Adam Kuban being one of, you know, the, I would say main figures of this style. Um, he's, you know, he has it. He did the Margo's pizza pop-up for many years, uh, doing this kind of pizza. Uh, his recipe is available in a couple books and websites, so we definitely have to mention him for talking about this style of pizza. Okay, any questions so far? I know I'm among friends, but like, um, you know, if you wanna ask any questions at this point, I'm gonna probably move this up there. Uh, hope nobody gets dizzy while I do that. What about lard in the dough? Um, I have heard of that. I've heard of like Crisco and all kinds of fats, olive oil, soybean oil, lard. Um, I think I've heard more about that kind of fat being used to grease the pan to get it like nice and crispy. So I, I personally don't have experience using lard, but if there's anyone in the chat that wants to like that knows about that and wants to share, please, by all means. Okay, I think we're just gonna get, go ahead and get started. Don't get dizzy, guys, I'm gonna move you. basically want to end with this. Okay, I did this one ahead of time, just to make sure everything is okay. Um, very similar to the tavern style we did last time. Let's grab our dough. So I mentioned this last time too, but like I really like using these, these containers for tavern style, for bar style. Um, it's a very easy way to store your dough in a home fridge. Uh, also a great way to store your cheese. This is the right amount of cheese that we'd be used for, for this kind of pizza. Um, yeah, it's just very handy. You've used Crisco on pans, but never have in dough. Only olive oil, corto. I actually, I love corto. Corto is like, it's in my, like, if we had a top five oils, it'd be my top. One, two, three, four, five. Like that's how much I love Corto. But like I don't use Corto in Corto truly. I don't use in the oil, uh, the dough itself. I like using it as a finisher because just it's so good. So make sure you oil the container so it's easy for it to get out. And We 
busting flower. I'm gonna start just smashing this out. If I can, I like using a foolish for this, um, you know, for, for flavor perspective, and I find that it's easier to stretch this out. I made this dough, I started it around noon yesterday, and I did a very long bulk ferment, about maybe six hours before I divided, put it away. It's pretty slack, I'm um, very happy with it, but if I can, I like using like a 20% foolish for this. Okay, this out. Get that out of the way. So I'm going to do a quarter turn. This way I'll get an even crust on this guy. If your dough is snapping back, just give it a second for it to relax. You know, all kinds of factors affect this. Temperature, it's chilly, right? Your dough might like start snapping back. You know, because it's a pan pizza, right? Like, I don't know if you saw just now. If it gets misshapen, it's okay, right? Because like the pan's gonna kind of conform to the shape, the dough rather, the dough is gonna conform to the shape of the, the pan. One more time. You want it to be even throughout, right? Like if it's thin here, thick over there, you don't really want that. So when you're rolling, make sure you're going the full length of it, okay? Let's start, let me oil the pan. Don't need a crazy amount. You want enough so it doesn't stick, but also so it crisps up the bottom of this pie. stretches after this and find a dock hand and it helps the dough loosen up for that. stretch the middle, right? You don't want to get thin spots on this. So again, this is a seven ounce, 200 gram dough ball. Just good for a uh, 12 inch pan. And look, you can take kind of like the thicker parts, right? And stretch it in an effort to get it more even. Very, very user-friendly, I find, like this style and tavern style. You don't have to worry about dosing to the peel, that kind of nonsense. Although I, I will recommend that, um, make sure you do a couple of bakes, like not even pizza, but like, 
you know, meat, whatever, in these pans to get them nice and seasoned. Otherwise, you might find uh, this is going to stick to the pan. And actually, what I like doing with this, once I have this to the edge, take my oil. That just helps any potential sticking this might have. I also like using a paring knife at the end after a bake. It's like if you had the frigo kind of glued to the to the edge of the pan. Just take the paring knife. It's an easy way to get that out. too much don't over sauce it remember we're trying to keep this crispy right so look it's not too runny Find a pastry brush helps to keep keep this really even in terms of coverage. Okay, your cheese. Any questions so far? Okay, this is 180 grams. Go to the edge and get that Crico. Okay. Uh, other than running for about an hour, Highest setting. So this is, let's just take an oven check. And my stone deck is reading 522, which is good. All right. Oven. Start the timer. So at about five minutes, I'm gonna check this thing. I might even check earlier to make sure it's not bubbling up.
Has anyone made bar pies in this chat right now? Is this like completely foreign concept for some people? I don't know. Like when I started traveling, I talked about like grandma pizza, right? Like people would say like, what, what the hell is a grandma pizza? And that like that experience kind of taught me that, you know, don't assume that people just know, especially the pizza. It's like, you know, growing up in New York, you just, you're in it, right? And people in other parts of the country just, they don't have the, they historically haven't had the same experience, right? So it's good to ask. Two minutes in, I'm gonna give a quick peek. Okay, it's not bubbling, thank goodness. So after this one, we'll do a, a pepperoni and then take more questions. We'll do, I'll come back to the resources and then yeah, we'll just hang out and have fun. Yeah, that's three and a half minutes. So I'm wondering maybe for a future stream, we'll do, um, since I'm kind of on this tavern bar, whatever kick you want to call it, I'm going to do maybe a uh, St. Louis style pizza, which is kind of similar. I've heard, you know, all kinds of things about it. Um, even that it doesn't use a leavening agent. Um, so, and that's how you get it like super, super paper thin. peek at this real quick. Well, it's bubbling. timer it's not my smoke alarm thankfully um so it was kind of bubbling right which can happen with dough um even if you dock it so if that happens you can use a paring knife kind of poke at wherever you're getting the bubbles and that should take care of the problem I'm gonna do another two minutes here and then I'm gonna see if I can get it out of the pan. And then once I do that, we will finish on the deck. Let me 
with the metal peel, stock them out. Take it out. I'm get a good shot of this somehow. I kind of see the freak over there. Okay. So I'm gonna try to fish this out and then finish it on the deck. before we do that. It's still a little, uh, I'd like to be, I, like, I would like for it to be a little more big before I do that. I can go to some of the resources now on this. So uh, I mentioned Adam Kuban earlier, and he has a recipe. You can find one on Serious Eats, where he used to be writer for. And then he also has a recipe in Ken Forkish's book, Elements of Pizza. I noticed there are two different pe um, recipes. And he does use oil in his dough, and it's, it's a very good recipe. What did I grab the pan with? It's a pan gripper. It's been very useful for when I do Detroit style pop-ups or for grabbing a round pan. Very, very useful. Um, I also got it from Lloyd. Um, yeah, highly recommend. I'll show you one more time. You don't need that. Obviously, you can use a peel, you can use, you know, rag, whatever, um, whatever makes your life easier. solid now. Let's get the great guys here. Hey, don't tip over, please.
the pan, and now what we want to do is finish it on the deck. from a minute to three, it's up to you. Depends how well done you want it. Streaming user dude, do I know you? Yeah. Oh, Foodie Buddha. Good to see you. Thanks for joining. AKA Ted. In there for a minute and a half. Keep going. Ted Michael waved at you. Get a wave back. Oh, he used an emoji. Okay, it's been about three minutes. So I want to give a shout out to Notorious P.I.E. He has a book on bar pies. Full disclosure, I've never used it, but if you go to his account, great looking stuff, not just bar pies. Um, it's Detroit, this like American styles. Um, yeah, very cool stuff. Go. Jesus. 
the cooling rack. Flop here. Bombs are pretty dark. Okay. I like usually finishing this with a Gran Romano. Chili oil is usually nice for the style pizza. And that's it, guys. Pretty straightforward. Very user friendly pizza. Uh, I like cutting into wedges for this as opposed to squares that you do for a tavern style. Obviously, there's no rule. Um, that's just my own personal preference. So, yeah, do we have any questions? do a pepperoni now. Put you guys back up there. Thanks, Michael. Here's the dough I had from before. So this has been out a little longer. You can see it's like it's shrinking back already. Um, and I'm gonna make a conscious decision right now to use a paring knife. You know it's docked, right? I'm gonna make a little more holes here. And actually, we can do it with the docker first. See it's a little thinner here. Just put a couple of these. Trying to preempt any bubbling, potential bubbling. This guy's thin.
I'll have this stream up later. Not today, but yeah, tomorrow or later. Uh, I'll upload it to the YouTube channel. You can also go there. I have the timer demo up there as well. So I'm just trying to build this database of content for you guys. Scale. Here's my mini scale. This side measures a tenth of a gram, which is really useful. Pepperoni here. Actually, I don't know if this is Isa. I think this is actually Hormel. Um, you know, obviously use whatever brand you like um, with our different textures and flavors. Edges, we get that Rico. Okay, let's back in the oven. baking or the, the previous one is platter that my wife made her brand is mushyware she does pottery she made this nice pizza platter for me Michael Fox, is this going to be the, the topic for tonight's pizza club? Yeah, 
anyone who's not a member of Pizza Club, who's in the chat, definitely join. A lot, a lot of fun. Get some great people there. News of the week tonight. All right. We made it. Appreciate that. Okay, we're two minutes in. Let me check. I just highlighted Booty Buddha's emoji. It says seems good is the name of the emoji. Thank you for that. Okay, well, that's baking. Do we have any questions about the dough, about cheese blend, the bake time? We had questions about my hair last time, did not disclose how I keep it nice. That's why I'm wearing a hat this time. <laughs> Do not watch Pete's making videos without pizza on hand. Well, now, see, I taught you how to make it, and you can make this now. I appreciate everyone joining. So Ted, where would you be getting pizza from if you weren't making your own? The choices are sparse in Atlanta. I think there are a couple um, there's that food hall, right? That's a Neapolitan place. I'm not super familiar with the Atlanta pizza scene. Okay, we're five minutes in. Some bubbling. No, take care of that. Grippy. Adding a couple more pepperoni to this. There were some sliding around. Four W. That's it's Neapolitan, right? I'm assuming just based on the the dome oven they had. Oh, it's a Jersey Detroit saw. That's cool. Man, Detroit saw just like exploded a couple of years ago. That was 
It was a lot of fun to watch. I was I was always hoping, right, that like tavern would like tavern and bar would just kind of like you know anyone who tries it just they love it. I think I think part of it's also like yeah, Detroit's great. You know, it's a very very nice looking pizza. It's delicious. It's fun to make. Um, I think you know you eat so often, right? Like it's it's pretty heavy. Tavern and bar because it's like thin, um, easy to share. Um, you get your pizza fix, and you also you don't use as much cheese. I find um, when I would do my tavern style pop ups, I would use half the cheese I would for my that I would compared to the Detroit style. Yeah, they're all pretty user friendly, I would say. Detroit's pretty user friendly because of the pan. Tavern and bar because you can roll it out, you can do it. Um, you know, I for my tavern style, I do like a par bake. Um, makes it easy. Bar again in the pan. I guess you can categorize these as the non stick to the peel uh, category. Are there any tavern or bar styles down in Atlanta? The funny thing is like, sometimes you go to the, these places that have this style of pizza or like the, the general like tavern bar, whatever. And like, um, I went to a place in Jersey with Adam Kuban a couple months ago and, um, they brought us the pizza and, you know, asked them, you know, like, what style of pizza is this? And, like, it, it confused them, right? They're like, they have to think about it for a second. They're like, oh, thin crust, right? Like, it's just not everyone thinks of things in terms of style or type of pizza. It's just, you know, I think people do remember an era when, like, pizza was just pizza. It's like, you know, Detroit style wasn't Detroit style. It's just if you were in Detroit, that's what it was. And I think... You know, as the internet came about and people started learning about what was out there, we started like putting things into style. Okay, looks pretty good. I'm gonna finish this guy in the deck. Paring knife, you guys can see right here, but cheese is kind of getting stuck to the pan. So we can free it a little bit. Flipping pepperoni. I think instead of cup and char, you should call it flip and char. There you go. 
You need me to come down and make some pie. Show them how it's done. I'm showing you right now, aren't I? <laughs> I've been to Atlanta once and I really liked it. Very, very cool. Although I couldn't find Pepsi anywhere. Kidding. There are like three restaurants that serve Pepsi. You have to like smuggle it or? <laughs> That's funny. here but just want to thank everyone for joining um this is a lot of fun i want to do these as regularly as possible um do different styles different toppings different whatever pizza related um you know have more like audience participation like maybe there's something you want me to make and i'll try making it in this kitchen um you know go to the youtube channel next little pizza subscribe if you want to watch the previous stream if you want to watch this stream again and yeah. Working on revamping the website. So kind of house all the content, can have my recipes there, um, all the links. It's good, it's good stuff. Three fire emojis from Michael. on this I recommend we're on a cooling rack so it doesn't get soggy if you want our pizza to be crispy there she is oh her glory very simple let's make it home just grab a pan basic dough recipe yeah, have fun. Feel free to reach out with questions. And I will catch you guys next time. Thank you. Thank you. You're awesome for joining.